the project that we've been working on at Penn is, uh, is an immunotherapy approach to pancreas cancer. Um, and so the idea is to really re-educate the immune system to recognize the cancer um, and use it as a way in which to attack cancer. The approach that we're working at here is uh, looking at pancreas cancer. Um, and the way the idea here is that uh, we're combining it with chemotherapy. And it's based off of preclinical uh, work, which has demonstrated that combination of chemotherapy and an antibody that targets the immune system. It's called uh, uh, an antibody against CD40 uh, that's on the immune system. And when you, when you use chemotherapy, you basically um, uh, alert the immune system to where the, the cancer is. And then by coming in with an activating antibody, you can now turn the immune system on to go find the cancer. Um, and it tends to be a, you know, a lot of the cancer, a lot of the approaches at the moment are looking at chemotherapy for pancreas cancer. Um, and uh, it was recently demonstrated in, in the Science Magazine 2009 that it may be very hard for chemotherapy to get into the tumor. And so the novel approach here is the fact that the immune system is already coming into the, to the tumor. Um, you can see it all over the place. Um, and so what we're trying to do is re-educate it now, not to help the cancer grow, but actually prevent it from growing. We're using gemcitabine because it's a standard of care. Um, but gemcitabine also appears to be immunomodulatory. Um, and so it may also help change the immune system so that it's not one that actually helps promote the cancer. And so by combining gemcitabine now with, with our antibody, our immunotherapy approach, we're looking to see whether or not this will deliver responses. We're at the uh, completion of a phase one study. There are a few patients that are continuing on treatment at this point in time. We've had three partial responses, um, which is impressive for a small study of only about 21 patients. Um, and uh, uh, our approach at this point is, you know, based on the preclinical models that we've had, it's not quite to the level of efficacy that we would have expected, but it's promising. Um, and so we're turning back to looking in the laboratory how to make this even better. I think the message here is the fact that, uh, you know, there are new therapies that are coming out. Um, and uh, they don't have to be toxic therapies. You know, one of the most important things for patients is the fact that, you know, this, this is a disease for which the outcome is poor, and, and we know this. Um, and the last thing you want to do is provide therapies that's going to make their quality of life um, worse. Uh, and the, the, the uh, optimistic purport, uh, point here is that our therapy seems to be providing progression-free survival. But it also is not doing that at the compromise of the patient's quality of life. Um, the immunotherapy is not very toxic at all. In fact, it's received once a month, and patients have a little bit of chills around the time of, the, of, the, of the treatment uh, and some shakes like you get with the flu. But they disappear, and you don't experience anything else for the rest of the month. Um, and so there are approaches that are, being, that are now being developed um, that uh, can help these patients, and it's from an immune-based perspective that may not have the same level of toxicities that other targeted therapies and chemotherapy have had.